G'day everyone. I wanted to give everyone a sneak peek of my Maker Fair project. Maker Fair is coming up in uh, about two weeks now, and no doubt everyone is making their final preparations. I am somewhat behind, but getting there. Anyway, this is the drum memory for my optical glow pewter zero, as I'm calling it, but I don't know if I'll get the, com the rest of the computer done in time, but the memory is more or less working. What you can see here is a drum of uh, zinc sulfide phosphor, copper activated zinc sulfide, being written to with UV light and erased with infrared light. Um, I'm cheating a little bit using modern technology, but the general idea was to, was to make a really simple memory that could be um, built with you know, ancient technology, potentially like 1920s, 1930s kind of thing where you'd have argon discharge tubes for the UV production and uh, infrared might have been a bit more complicated but maybe you could use direct heating with uh, infrared um, you know radiators or something using hot elements but anyway this is uh, I think it's about 50 words at the moment of 8-bit memory I wanted to build a much bigger one because the rest of the machine is 16-bit but uh, this prototype may have to do because we're running out of time I've got a couple of other projects that I'm going to take with me as well I'll give you a a sneak preview of those. Uh, the Seattle Maker Fair will probably also um, be something I'm going to and I've got a couple of more interactive kind of um, mechanical digital projects for that and I'll show you that as well. Alrighty, so as you can see here if I stand in the shadow and I put myself in the my monitor's uh, shadow, you can see here that the, the phosphor doesn't decay too slowly and it's still quite detectable on this side, even with this camera. Though obviously it's noisy at the moment because you're looking at uh, very low light. If I turn some light on so I can sh you can see the rest of the machine, I'll detail the parts for you. Okay, so obviously we have the drum um, here, that, and we have a stepper that's moving the drum around. Up here we have the red right head. The reed, as you can see, is still work in progress. We've got a bunch of photo detectors for that. Right is UV LEDs. And a race, which you can see down in there. And the blue colour is obviously the UV going through and being picked up as, uh, as blue in this camera. There's quite a large amount of UV uh, IR energy being directed at the drum there to erase it. So those... Uh, Signals are all clocked in serially because the, the rest of the machine is going to be a, uh, a bit serial machine. Controller at the moment is a tiny 2313. And so I'm using one of those Polu, you can see the light, stepper modules. Alrighty, so that's, uh, that's the Glowpewter memory. I'll turn that off. Because the fan is driving me insane. This is my other project that I'm going to take, possibly more for the Seattle Maker Faire than the, the Bay Area one, but this is a mechanical um, counting module. Let's put some more light on here. It's going to be a, a puzzle when it's completed, but for now this was just a proof of concept. This was printed, uh, 3D printed, on a Dimension uh, 1200, SST 1200, which has a dissolvable support system. So this is actually completely sealed as you can see it's printed in one monolithic print it comes out like this you can see the support material is still attached to this one I have to uh, send it through the bath of lye to dissolve out all the material and there's all in the mechanics of it, it's all full of support as well so it takes about I suppose somewhere between five and ten hours to dissolve out properly so it's a grey code based system um, at any one time there is at least one bit that can change state and you only change one bit at a time so you have to find the right sequence of bits. So you can see that there's interlocks inside. There's a whole bunch of mechanics in there, which I'll uh, probably post the details. Maybe I'll actually put the, the files for this up on Thingiverse because it's kind of cool. It's one of the more curious mechanical contraptions I've come up with. But I want to make these uh, these pins actually lock a me mechanism, maybe like a big padlock. I was thinking about calling it, you know, Gray's padlock and having it uh, be like a puzzle. The uh, mathematics that actually supports this, I might do another video on. But the 
I discovered quite a lot of uh, interesting facts about the the maths that I that I use to generate the um, all the the control plates inside, and it's possible through row and column ops on the on the associated um, matrix to randomise the code a bit. Unfortunately, a generic binary sequence um, is not possible. And there's several other constraints on the the kinds of sequences that are possible, but the grey code is actually still quite a bit of a puzzle, particularly with more bits like this device here. And, and if you add enough bits, it's uh, it's very similar to the Tower of Hanoi problem actually, and it grows exponentially. Obviously, the uh, if you add enough bits, you could make something that couldn't be unlocked. Um, fairly short something, you know, maybe 24 bits or so, would be very difficult to unlock that within your lifetime. But these uh, these little five and eight bit things are a reasonable challenge. You can five bits is actually pretty trivial. Eight bits you can easily get lost when you're uh, when you're going through the sequence. So, but it's if you know the sequence, it's actually quite quick. You can uh, you can manipulate these these bits quite quickly and and unlock it. It's also uh, unfortunately possible to go a little bit beyond the terminating state. That's uh, sort of a consequence of the way it's made. It'd be very difficult. Uh, mechanically to constrain it to only go to the terminating state and stop there. Anyway, I might do another video on that. Um, my third project is over here in pieces. This is also a phosphor illuminating system. I've got some servos and a laser diode here, a blue laser diode. We'll have another couple of uh, servos and some other input. Uh, I think I'll leave this one as a surprise because this one could actually be the most spectacular looking of the bunch even though it's actually one of the more trivial things to put together and kind of throwing it together here at the last minute. Alrighty, um, if you can come to the uh, the Bay Area Maker Fair. Tickets uh, are available now and have been for a while and probably going to uh, start drying up so you should uh, yeah you should definitely come along if you can. I think it's going to be fun. It's going to be my first Maker Fair. Not completely sure what to expect but I will be in the dark area somewhere. Um, I'm sure there'll be plenty of really cool projects and actually is my first time going as a maker with a with a table it's going to be uh, difficult to get around and see all the cool stuff that's there but I'll uh, try and well I, I'll have someone else obviously hopping on my table so I'll be able to leave and go around but yeah it should be cool. I hope to see you there. Alrighty, bye.